to do these different types of methods, you know, uh, multi-layer perceptors and those types of things that might come out. Uh, what, it, what it really is looking at is that uh, it hasn't yet quite grown, although it's massive, it hasn't quite yet grown to the point of being able to reconcile uh, some of the intangibles that we do. And mm -hmm. so when I look at it today, so um, so what you've done is really built out a great neural network, right? The huge amounts of information and you see the streaming um, uh, kind of uh, images of that. Uh, but then what that does is create, and I'm going to be simple here, okay? I'm just going to kind sure. of keep it level, is, is your large language models. And so those large language models are great, right? I mean, they've been developed over time. They're feeding from all the neural network interactions that are occurring that are, you know, kind of like these, uh, you know, uh, contextual synapses that are happening in the background, creating these language models, right? But the language models are still small. They're not as broad or big as we want to be because of the fact we haven't been able to reconcile that type of emotion. And I'm not sure we're ever going to uh, be there. I think there's a guideline, and I forgot it off the top of my head, of 10 things that uh, come to, uh, to, that computers would need to do to be cognitive. Because right. that's what we're talking about, right? Cognition. Yeah. You know, and, and, and so it's really artificial intelligence. And I like the term augmented intelligence. There was someone out of uh, Michigan, University of Michigan, that mentioned that one time during a, a 